Okay. So, <clears throat> Eiffel versus CD events then is the topic. Uh, CD events was formed under an organization that is called CD Foundation. Uh, Fatih that was here yesterday represents the CD Foundation. Uh, he is the general manager, I think it's called, of the CD Foundation uh, since sometime just before the summer. So CD Foundation or Continuous Delivery Foundation is an open source community. Uh, and it's a part of the Linux Foundation on this huge uh, open source foundation with thousands and thousands of projects in it. And uh, the CD Foundation then aims to be a home for software, open source software, uh, focusing on uh, on continuous delivery and continuous integration as well. Uh, I must admit, I, I would like to say that. Um, and it intends then to focus on the uh, the production software production part of uh, the open source uh, area or domain. You could add in that when they talk about this delivery, they include everything else. Yeah. So I mean, the, they there are so many definitions of what continuous delivery is, uh, and there was some quite uh, high discussions or quite what should I say? intense discussions uh, like two years ago on what should things be called uh, and what are these terms and it more or less ended up as I got it at least that I mean continuous integration and continuous deployment and continuous release and whatever testing could be seen as the part of continuous delivery so continuous delivery is from end to end more or less. Uh, yeah uh, by the way, this presentation is more or less a copy of the presentation from a year ago, but I've updated almost all slides slightly. So this landscape picture was there a year ago as well, but has been uh, increased a bit. So this is the landscape of tools that the CD Foundation recognizes being tools in the CI-CD domain. I say CI-CD then, not just CD, but uh, whatever. So they're acknowledged by the CDF to be part of their landscape. Um, we see some orchestrator tools there. I guess you can see that um, from the distance as well. Jenkins X, Spinnaker, Tecton, Screwdriver is a new thing, uh, and Jenkins there. Uh, and then we have some other areas of, of uh, open source software. Uh, and over here, we see in the observability and, met and analy analysis uh, group, there is a subgroup called tracing and messaging, where we have iPhone, we have open telemetry, and uh, what is it called now? I don't remember now. Honeycomb, I think it is, yeah. And then uh, CD, that's the new, new project there. And the projects here that are framed are uh, sponsored by or are somehow part of the CD Foundation. Uh, so the light blue ones here are in incubating state and dark blue is a graduated state. So there's only Jenkins currently that is graduated. Tecton is about to become graduated, uh, which well then we'll talk maybe more about that in the maintenance maintainer section session later, but that's on the how how mature is the project itself. Uh, so that there is well handled governance and so on uh, around the project. Uh, yeah. Wait. Yes. I thought this would only contain open source software. Ah. Uh, but Datadog is is not. Um, That's probably why it's got a gray background. Okay. Oh yeah, I mean there are Could multiple so. now. I see. If we're looking at yeah. the gray background. I mean. Team City, Circus here. Yeah. Harness. So yeah, maybe that's actually a good point. I haven't actually reflected on that. Uh, uh, on the uh, landscape.cd foundation, uh, its uh, great logos are not open source. Oh, good. Yeah, good, good. Perfect. But Docker, so, 
Well, that's true. There's there's the, the Docker trademark and the Docker community edition, but but Git isn't open source. It's proprietary. Uh, GitLab. GitLab. Yeah. It's it's both. It's there's both a community both. edition there as well. Oh, GitLab. Okay. Yeah. 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 On the other hand, there's a community edition of Docker, which, but wow. Well, yeah. Anyway, but okay. Question answered. Mm. Thanks. And they're also the, the members of the CD Foundation itself. Uh, and you might not see Ericsson here, and that's because Ericsson is not actually a paying member of CD Foundation, uh, even though we are quite active in the foundation. Okay, so going on then to the interesting things then SIG events or CD events. Uh, so SIG stands for special interest group and that's quite common to have in these foundations to have a group where we discuss specific uh, topics uh, there was early uh, in the cd foundation something called sig interoperability that was one of the first special interest groups formed uh, in the cd foundation and within that special interest group there was a stream created for talking about uh, events to solve the interoperability issues in CICD tools, among CICD tools. That stream was created in June 2020 and it became its own special interest group that was called them SIG events in February last year. And from that special interest group, the project, CD events project, was launched early this year, or maybe even December last year, I don't remember now. Uh, the name was set, I think actually in December last year, and there was actually a logo created for it last week then as well. Uh, the special interest group there is currently shared by me and Andrea Frittoli from IBM. Uh, so we are driving the, the group itself. We have weekly meetings, at least once a week, uh, some are on more administrative things on the special interest group and we discuss like proof of concepts and have presentations on different event topics and then the vocabulary work group meetings are more focused on the actual protocol and the CD events project itself. Uh, so the focus areas currently for this uh, group if we join them as, as one thing of course the protocol vocabulary is, is uh, quite intense discussions on. Uh, we are approaching the first official release so 0.1 of CD events in a few weeks. We are working on three different SDKs in parallel, SDK for Go and Python and Java. Uh, we have a proof of concept uh, on an older edition of the protocol, I must admit, but anyway, it's about to be upgraded, updated. Uh, that proof of concept includes uh, event plugins or event handling for these different tools that can interrogate, interoperate them. Captain, Tekton, Spinnaker, and Jenkins. And then IFID is actually part of the proof of concept to some extent as well. And I'll come back to a bit to that later. And there are some participants there uh, who are, are or at least have been active in these discussions. You might recognize some of those names, I guess. We could add in that the pop that we're talking about here is going to be demoed. Yeah, at yeah. The next, uh, next community meeting in November 10th. I have a picture. That I think my last picture on, on this slide deck is about that proof of concept. So I can watch in that then as well. So this event protocol then, CD events protocol. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a basic draft soon to become 0 to 1. Uh, it is somewhat compatible with Eiffel, and that's probably the, the main reason for me still being there <laughs> in, in some sense. I mean, as long as it is somehow compatible with Eiffel, I'm still interested in, in working with it, uh, at least. If it becomes obvious that it will not be compatible, uh, I, th I think Ericsson might lose interest in, in continuing to participate in, in the group there. Uh, interesting to know maybe that it's based on this cloud events standard, which is a, uh, um, a, a, a layered event standard, which is, doesn't really 
tell you what information you should send in your events, as we do in Eiffel, but it tells you how to uh, form the envelope of the events or how to but what metadata an event should contain to be able to route it in a good way and to be able to um, yeah, uh, understand what it contains without really defining what it should contain. So it's a very generic standard, which is something that it, if you would relate it to something in Eiffel, it would be like the meta layer of, of Eiffel, which is the same for all our events in, in Eiffel. Uh, so in, in this CD events protocol, we use more or less the cloud events layer as being the, the meta layer. Uh, it's simplified, but anyway. Um, well, one interesting thing maybe from the vocabulary discussions we've had, all the decisions there is that we, the event types, that the names of all events have a subject and a predicate. So we, we will see that in, in the next uh, page, but so each event type has something that it operates on and then a predicate that says, what, what operation am I performing on this subject? So if we go into the different event types that exist today, uh, they are grouped in something that are called buckets. And there's a bucket for the core events, which could then be compared with the Eiffel, I don't know if you call them life cycle events, but we said yesterday activity events. So there are two different activity events, at least in this bucket. Uh, one subject then is a pipeline run and another subject is the task run and a pipeline run can be queued started and finished and a task run can be started or finished there is for some reason so far at least not any queued task run events to find um, and if you are in any way uh, aware of what tecton is these things are very much tecton names and that's the, the, the current names. We will see if we will make them more generic later on, maybe. But that's how they are called today. So we talked yesterday briefly about uh, stages, for example, in, in Jenkins. And so this is like a hierarchy of things. A pipeline could contain tasks. Uh, just as in Jenkins, a pipeline would contain stages. Um, OK, another bucket there is uh, the source code version control events where these different events are created for that bucket. So there are events for repository, which we don't have in Eiffel, and for a branch. And then we have for the source change itself. The repository can be created, modified, or deleted. The branch can be created, or deleted, and the change can have different predicates on it then. Created, reviewed, merged, abandoned, and updated. Uh, I wouldn't say that these have been used in, in practice all of these i mean it, it doesn't have it really proven that they are all needed and, and how they should be used and so on so consider much of this uh beta i would say yeah Magnus. yeah i was just curious about what, what the point of yeah the repository events would be i mean i i can see in like a github context where those events would have some relevance but in Using it in a CD pipeline, I'm, I'm not really sure why. Oh, sorry, we need it. No, and I can't really argument for why argue for why we we would need them here. It could, in my world, be just text fields saying what trip or quiz it is instead of defining some event with some kind of ID which you would then refer to from a change. Uh, so, well. If we would have taken Eiffel to the extreme, we should maybe have done that as well and not have repository name strings in our events, but instead of a event links, but yeah. Um, so we'll see what the future comes with, if they will still be there or not. I, I can't really say. No. And this is also flavored uh, on GitHub, so there's not very much here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but I mean, it's still most of it. I mean, all of it would apply in a Garrett context as well. So there's nothing really. Yeah, I mean, quite early we 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 it was discussed if this should be called pull request. Yeah, but, which would have been yeah, incredibly but, but uh, yeah, so that's one thing. That so we at least we have tried to generalize it to some extent to make yeah. it. 
Thank you. But then you will see that these are very thin. You might not even see it, but these are very, it doesn't contain much at all. So you can use them for more or less whatever. But of course, the, the people involved here mostly use GitHub. Yeah. It doesn't cover branch updates that doesn't involve changes or pull requests. Uh, no. Seemingly. And, and that's yeah. Yeah. probably a limitation. Yeah. So there are room for updates, improvements, modifications, removals, whatever, uh, I would say. We are still in 0 one, not even 0 one yet. So bear with us and come join us and help us out for that matter. Uh, so the continuous integration events that are, that are called, uh, again, these bucket names might not be the final names for anything, but for some reason, it's, it's good to have something to, to frame the discussion around when we have different kinds of events. And this is like a mix of things, I would say. Here we have builds, which are kind of an activity. So those are like, yeah, build activities or activities in Eiffel. Queued start to finish. Uh, an artifact can be packaged or published, which is more or less the same as an Eiffel, created and published. Events for test suite and test cases, they are very similar to how it is in Eiffel, just the names. And I want to point out there, so we have, there are build events and there is also uh, pipeline and task events, uh, but there's only a pipeline task in general, and we only have build and special events. So that is how it looks right now. Yep. And what's the difference between, would you have like a pipeline run, task run, and a build in a sort of a hierarchy, or how, how did, did they, I, I can see how pipeline run mm -hmm. and task run relate, but build, how does that relate to the other ones? They want to have specific events for a specific thing. So if you're running a build, then you would send a build event. If you're running something else, it would be a task. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. So they are both right. part of pipelines. I think uh, that's. But I, I I don't have it. We can look at it if we go into that. But if the well, the tasks actually don't have a queued event, so there's no task queued. So yeah. that doesn't really match. But yeah, again, it's it's. The, the protocol is more as created from from uh, a proof of concept and a SDK more or less at the same time, which then is used in this proof of, proof of concept. So the events that are formed are there because they were needed for the proof of concept more or less. And, and then of course that can change, I would say. But still it's somehow relevant and it's it, to many extents similar to how, how it is in Eiffel. So it's not that far away. Then there's a bucket for continuous deployment events, uh, where we have environment for some reason in the deployment event. Well, that maybe that's that's obvious, but anyway, yeah. And then the service there. Uh, an environment can be created, modified, and deleted. The service can be deployed, upgraded, rolled back, and removed and published. Yeah, let's not go into all those details. Some real world examples then, or real world drafts, beta examples, whatever. There was a uh, presentation on the open source summit in Dublin a few weeks back, where uh, CD events was proven to be useful for DORA uh, metrics. And uh, in that presentation, there was also a demo uh, where CD events then were used to calculate some of the DORA metrics, not all of them, I would say, but some of them. And these are uh, a reformatted variant of those events that were sent there. They more or less look like this. Uh, I left out like hundreds of custom data lines which were used for the, the demo and proof of concept there. Uh, so there's the custom data, which is very similar to how we have it in NIFO. But with one addition there that we there is an optional data content type, I think it's optional, uh, where you state what format should this custom data have. And the default is, is JSON, then and probably most obvious to use is JSON, but there could be something else. Um, so this is what, an, what the CD event looks like. I mentioned cloud events before, and, and this is the context part here is actually 
somewhat a duplication of what also exists in, in the cloud events layer, which is which is outside this, I would say. Uh, but the context is more or less what we call meta as well. So there's an ID for the event, which is UUID, as, as in, in Eiffel. There's a source saying where it comes from, which is just a string in currently, not an object. The timestamp is the human readable timestamp, uh, event type, and the version. The event type has this dot notation uh, and not as in Eiffel. So dev.cd events, this is the, the web, the home for cd events, cd events .dev. And then the subject and the predicate. So change.merged, subject predicate. And there's also a version currently in the event type itself, instead of having it in a separate uh, field for the event type. Um, uh, do, 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 do and that one's supposed to be semantic, right? Yeah, I'm actually a bit concerned here now while we have it in this way. Um, yeah, let's not uh, try to understand that right now. Because this is this is the event type version, I would say. Zero. No, sorry, this is the... Ah, oh, wait now. That's the, uh, the spec version. So the, both, both the, the event types themselves and also the spec have individual versions. Um, so this is probably, but this should be semantic, yeah, right. That, yeah. That's probably not correct, correct. And this is the, the version of the whole spec itself where it's included. Then, yeah, so the subject here uh, is then what contains the actual interesting data. So there is another ID here. Uh, for the source change. So the event ID itself is not used. Uh, and this ID could have different forms depending on what, what subject the event is, is concerned about. So this is a hash for the source change there. Uh, the source here is some kind of convenience application from the context, which I haven't really understood why we need, but anyway. The type field is exactly the same as the event subject there. So it's also some kind of duplication or easy access thing to see what, what type this is of subject. And then the actual interesting data then would be in the content part, which you see is very thin currently. So the show is there and the repository ID is there which would then somehow identify a source change. Uh, of course, we lack things from, from what we see from Eiffel, but, but this somehow works and in a way to perform the needed calculations. Uh, what happens then after the, the, the change is merged, you create some artifacts. Uh, so artifact packaged has a reference then to the same source change so there is a change reference here, which has the same ID then as the ID of the subject dot ID from the source change event. So that's how those are linked or related. Instead of having a links field pointing at the actual source change event ID, they can be matched that because they have the same change ID here. And then this artifact that is packaged has its own ID which is then a, in this case, a package URL, as we are familiar with from, from Eiffel as well. So that's the idea of the, the artifact that is built. Um, and then that ID is also then part of the artifact published event. So we can see that something has been published and that's the same as was uh, packaged earlier on. So that's how those can be related. So it's not explicit links between the events, at least not yet, but there are things to, to relate them to each other. Uh, service deployed, which is a bit interesting when we see the discussions from yesterday. So here we can see that the artifact ID is here that was deployed as a service. And then this is the idea of the actual service that was deployed. Um, 
And then in what environment was this done? So there's a, a reference to an environment. So there would probably have been an environment created event sent earlier, which has the same ID in its subject.id as this one. But that was not part of the list of events I've got, at least. And the subject.id, is that an arbitrary string or? Currently it's an arbitrary string, yes, free text string. Um, so it's up to you to, to define it in a way so that you can reference it from a, from a later event. Uh, service upgraded, it's very, very similar. I haven't really understood. Because uh, here we don't we don't reference the service deployed ID, but instead we upgrade and set the same subject ID again, referencing the same artifact ID. So I, I don't really see how, how... Artifact ID is not the same. Uh, no, it's not the same either. No. The hash is okay, of course, it's a new artifact, yeah. Uh, and it's the same, okay, so the same service <coughs> has got a new artifact in it, yeah. Maybe that's obvious. Huh? Yes. Uh, any questions on the events? Of course, this brings multiple ideas and thoughts and uh, objections and whatever. Maybe we shouldn't go into all those now. <laughs> uh, Minus. Yeah, <laughs> you saw I had a question. So the custom data, uh, it looks like an object, but then yeah. we're saying that the content type is application slash JSON. Uh, it could be probably a string in there, if you like, and I'll not have just not have a structure in, in, in here and have just, just a string instead. Right, because I mean, if it, if it is an object, then it's not an application JSON. That's a string representation of an object. Ah, uh, hmm. Well, that's... What is the object version called? Because there is a, a data type that we can represent JSON as an object. Okay. I thought that was application JSON, but maybe I'm wrong. I mean, within a JSON structure like this, it seems very weird to say application that JSON, I would say. Well, well, let's not dwell on that. It's weird, I think. Yeah, I haven't seen any other use than JSON there. I mean, uh, there were some discussions, I believe, on other kinds of formats, but uh, it could maybe, maybe we have been discussing binary data here in, in different, but maybe not in, for the custom data. Yeah. This is a bit important on, on the Cloudiverse protocol where you have your data part which you're looking at right now. Uh, can have specification layer, can have application uh, like XML or whatever. Mm. And uh, so that's the idea here, I think. Mm. So this whole thing is part of then the, the data or the body of the cloud event uh, envelope or message or yeah, event. Uh, and then in itself, it contains other custom data, then which is uh, this. So uh, the proof of concept then, just my last slide here then. Uh, a year ago when this was also presented, uh, there was, I think the proof of concept just contained these parts. It was Tecton and Kepton, and then of course the cloud event broker underneath there. So making sure that things flow between them. And then, uh, some months ago, or maybe half a year ago, Spinnaker was added to the picture. So then these three, Tecton, Captain, and Spinnaker, were part of the proof of concept. Uh, and now, since just a few months back, or maybe week, weeks back, also Jenkins is part of this picture. This is not in the uh, official POC uh, repository yet. This is taken from Jalander's uh, repository. Uh, and we will see a demo of this uh, presentation in more in depth on this on the November 10th AFU community meeting. Uh, and to be able to integrate Jenkins here, Jalander used Eiffel more or less on, on our request as well to see that it, it can actually interoperate with Eiffel. So cloud events are sent back and forth, sorry, CD events are sent back and forth using the, the cloud events broker here. 
between these tools. And I think there is uh, a Tecton event that somehow uh, ends up here and is translated to IFO, uh, goes through the RabbitMQ message bus, and then triggers Jenkins. Here you have uh, Eiffel Intelligence listening to the message bus and then triggering Jenkins on the uh, uh, with the Eiffel Intelligence feature for triggering Jenkins jobs. Uh, and it then sends events back, which then is another Eiffel Intelligence subscription for uh, which will then end up in the translator. So it says Eiffel here, it's not Eiffel events all the time, but it's Eiffel data, I would say. So here it's actually a, an Eiffel Intelligence REST call. Here's an Eiffel event, there's an Eiffel event, but there is also an Eiffel Intelligence REST call there to the translator. So this translator is, is very, it's a very simplistic translator, more or less just translating event names between the two different protocols and a few fields. For example, the artifact ID is part of the, the translation there. A question on that. Yes. Is it a requirement for CD events to be translatable between Eiffel? No. So we I should expect it to break. Uh, probably, or I don't know, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure that this POC will actually end up in the CD events repository or CD events organization in GitHub itself. Might be so that this POC that includes Eiffel might instead be uh, contributed to the Eiffel community because there is quite limited interest in, in the CD events community to interrogate, interoperate with Eiffel. But obviously, from our perspective, from, from Eiffel perspective, it's, it's very interesting to see that the upcoming CD event standard will interoperate with Eiffel. So maybe this will then be, will then reside in Eiffel instead. Have I missed something important, Matthias, from CD events? Not really. Okay. I I can't... We'll, we'll see how, where CD events goes, depending on, on uh, yeah. Is I mean, right now I think oh. it's it's very few people that are actually driving pushing forward and doing things there. Yeah. Uh, the name of those part, and then there's a few, maybe one or two that is actually contributing. Yeah. So there's not a lot of people. So no, it's it's a fairly small community. So you saw quite many company names there, but they are not very active. I mean, and some of them are. Quite many of them are part of the discussions around the protocol and in these SIG meetings and those things, but very few are actually active in contributing and reviewing pull requests. Um, so that's, yeah, that's how it is. Uh, so, so one yeah. more question on really the last, the last slide there. So how does Tecton, Tecton is capable of emitting cloud events, compatible events, but those are not seed events. No. So is there some kind of, how does that work? There is a Tecton Cloud Events uh, add-on, which has CD event support. It's called, it's called Tecton Cloud Events. Or maybe... They have done something yeah, about events. On that they one. Tecton uh, repo to modify it to some CD events. Yeah. And then for Kipton, there is uh, an inbound out by the so some kind of translator. Think, so these orange boxes here are somehow altered to understand and, and and create CD events. Okay, so like plugins. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And the same for the spinner again. I'm not sure why it's not orange there, but I think the CD events controller obviously is a spinner curve plugin. Mm -hmm. there. And there is a cloud events player, by the way. Uh, so that's one one benefit of actually having such a using such a common meta layer in between or a broker with a more broadly used events protocol, because then you can get some such things for free. There is a player that you can use in, in the browser so you can see the events coming, uh, which would then be uh, related to an AFL events listener, which you can see on the web page and the visualization of just the events flowing, um, which we don't really have, at least not in the community. Uh, so I was just about to show the the homepage, which was also is also new since last year. Uh, describing what it is, 
uh, but maybe the interesting thing here from my perspective, which will be related to what Magnus will talk about later, a bit is that we uh, generate the documentation. So this page is generated from our specification. So here we can see the the uh, all the event types, uh, the subjects, and the different events with their uh, predicates there. So like this. I'm not a huge fan of the actual layout or the layout of things here, but that's that's uh, maybe up for improvements later on. One reason for having this is that I mentioned cloud events again then. So cloud events is a binding to CD events. The idea is that there could be other bindings than cloud events. We could use some other meta layer if, if there comes a new standard uh, for some reason which would replace cloud events. We could make another binding for that one, which would then make it uh, another structure. So this is what it looks like when it is in a cloud events context. If there will be some other cloud, some other frame to have it under, it would look slightly different. Um, and here you can see the, in the example that there are Duplicates somehow. Uh, yeah, you see the timestamp, for example, there. The same as the cloud events time. The ID should be the same as the ID in here and so on. So type there. is also the same, I think. And type is not the same. Not the same, same here, but it should be the same for some reason. Type and C type they should be the same, I think. Yeah. That's what it looks like. And then I guess the comment this is then the uh, binary mood transportation of HTTP uh, for cloud events to have a buffer JSON on the binary for HTTP. And then there is bindings for direct MQ and so on. Um, for HTTP, there it looks like right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the HTTP binding. Okay. Any more questions? Good. So, uh, how many other protocols? So we have similar events. None. Oh, well, there, uh, yeah, there are quite a lot of tools in this domain uh, that have their own proprietary protocols, uh, I would say. Uh, let's see if I can find some examples. Well, Captain is one. Uh, where is Captain now? Isn't Captain part of this picture now? Yeah, there is. So Captain is a, what should we say, continuous delivery, continuous deployment tool, which is completely event driven. Uh, so it's it's not as uh, Jenkins or Argo or Tecton that it has a predefined uh, pipeline specification, but instead, uh, or that it reads and, and evaluates, but instead it's uh, triggered, uh, each step of that, those workflows are triggered by events. And they have their own event specification. So they, I mean, that's a proprietary thing for Captain, but they're very interested in, in adapting that towards CD events, to use CD events there instead to have something more generic. Uh, there is another one called, uh, uh, not the, the Australian... Uh, directive. Directive, yeah. Not directive, but directive. I'm not sure if that's part of this picture. Uh, that's also totally event-driven framework, which has its own, again, oh, well, that's a very open event standard, but anyway, it has some kind of rules to see how to trigger the next step and so on. So there are multiple such specific, that are tool specific. Um, Tecton has also events. Tecton has also. Next question. How come, I mean, HL protocol is already available and it's used. How yeah. come this POC is not based on HL protocol testing? We, I mean, AFL was open source in 2016, and since then we have tried to spread the word uh, in the world <laughs> uh, to show how, how AFL could help people uh, setting a standard for their events usage. And for some reason we haven't succeeded. Uh, I can't really say why, but uh, we're probably not made the best job there. Uh, so this is an, I mean, 
we were more or less the initiators of this year event protocol uh, together with IBM and, and some others. But uh, so it is, we see it as a possibility to to make a fresh start with where where we could get everyone on board from day one. Uh, so people are so people see that their requirements and their interests are considered already from the beginning, and it's not something that some old telecoms company uh, just pushes onto others. So, because it's it's apparently a bit hard to to get people to realize that it could be relevant for them to use Cypher as it is. So, how do you think if CDMS will be the new standard? Do you think Ericsson will go on board at CDMS instead of Ericsson? Yeah, maybe eventually, or or there could be a combination of the two in the same using the translator. Using some kind of a translator. Uh, I mean, CD events again then uses these cloud events, and cloud events can actually uh, send events on multiple different uh, uh, message brokers or message uh, systems. So, RabbitMQ is just one of them. It could use Kafka, it could use a lot of other uh, systems. So, depending on what infrastructure you want to use for your event system, cloud events could be the, the layer in between. and and then you can use the same protocol on top of it, which I feel doesn't have the possibility for today. I mean, we are somehow bound to RabbitMQ, at least today. Not the protocol itself. Uh, not the protocol itself, but how we deploy it, at least. Uh, so um, it's it not, I mean, we need to do quite a lot of implementation or uh, in the infrastructure in, in adapting the different tools to be able to send Eiffel events on something else than RabbitMQ. Uh, but now but since the events, is that the like uh, is that pushing for any specific tool? No, the just the protocol. Just the protocol, actually. Even yeah, yeah, yeah. But we have the community around it. I mean, the protocol doesn't help much without the ecosystem. Uh, so it's it's not really useful without having tools that can send them and listen to it. Um, yeah. If that answers your yeah, yeah. Thank you. question. So so yeah, of course. I mean. We are struggling in, in Ericsson quite a lot to, to move from generation one to generation two of Eiffel. And this might seem then that a, like an even worse step if we sometimes should go to this CD events instead of Eiffel to them or Eiffel. Um, I will see how that goes. And if, um, as I said, we, we haven't really reached the 1.0 version and, and yeah, yet. And 0.1. One, yeah, we, uh, we were far from the 1.0. Okay. So before we before the 1.0 version is there and it's widely adopted in multiple of these tools that we already use in Ericsson, for example, I don't see why we should start using it internally. But when we see that it's getting native support in the tools we already use, if it gets native support in Jenkins or in other tools that we start using, um, then it might be a lot easier to build that business case to actually migrate to something to this new thing, even though of course it will cost, so that, that's how it is. But I guess that if, if seed events goes in a direction which is not favorable or it doesn't get up to the the maturity that Apple does, I don't think there's any use for migrating or going towards that one. But it's, it's, if, if we get all the tool support, then of course we have something for free. Right. Well, I was just hoping we could. You know, try to push Apple or market that so that they would add up from Apple instead, and then we don't yeah. have to do anything. Yeah, we, we have tried, um, but haven't succeeded. Um, I can't really point at any specific limitations on Eiffel that people would not be satisfied with, but um, so we should have a marketing campaign. We could still have that, sure. This is just one way. I mean, city events is, is one attempt, and it's, it's more or less me and Matthias, and mostly nowadays it's only me working with this. So, I mean, we don't spend too much time on this from a, from Ericsson perspective. So, if some people spend time on a marketing campaign for, a, for Ericsson, or sorry, for Eiffel, it might be just as good. That would be a huge benefit. All this would add up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I mean, that, that's the whole idea why we are trying to reach out there, because we think that if all these tools had native support for one common event protocol, it would be great. Mm -hmm. um, Because as it is right now, Apple is only used yeah within Sweden. Yeah, we have some we have some companies, but it's more or less only in Sweden. Yeah. yeah. Or of course, Ericsson is global, but yeah. Mm. All events are sent in Lean shipping and she's anyway. <laughs> <laughs> mm? Okay. Thank you.